Hey, and welcome back to Betty You. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson. And today we have a special guest with me. He is a dear friend of mine. And believe it or not, we used to work together. But he has a special talent. He is a great artist. And he's going to share with us some of the work that he's done. And his name is Derek Brown. And he brought along his protege, Chase <laughs> Begees. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chase. Chase Begees. So, Derek. Yes. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Cynthia. So let's talk about your art. What kind of artwork do you do? A lot of the artwork that I do is acrylic watercolor. Uh -huh. um, it's um, mostly images of different um, musical celebrities that I've mm. been inspired by more than anything uh -huh. else. I find myself liking to get into um, my art and just listening to music. Uh -huh. And the music that I listen to the most are the artists that I end up uh -huh. you know, portraying on my images and uh -huh. things. Um, a lot of Michael Jackson, a lot of um, um, Mary J. Blige, uh -huh. James Brown. Uh -huh. So a, a lot of it is musical artists in the neo soul uh -huh. um, aspect of uh -huh. it. So how long have you been doing your artwork? I've been art doing artwork for a lifetime, ever since I was this age. But oh, now, really? Yes. <laughs> I've always loved to draw. Uh -huh. But um, actually, the painting aspect only um, came into play as of 04. Uh -huh. um, I used it as a stress reliever. Uh -huh. <laughs> so when I would get off from the city, I would go home, and if things were real upbeat and tight, and I needed something to just get my mind, take my mind away from it all, uh -huh. pull out the paintbrushes and pull out the paper and just go to it. <laughs> Let's talk about your protege here with us, Chase. I understand you've done some artwork too. I paint a Batman in a house. A Batman in a house. Mm. And who's been teaching you how to paint? Daddy. Oh, he has. And you brought a picture with us to share with us um, a piece of art that you painted. Let's talk about your piece of art that we have here. Tell about it. I see it's a lot of different colors. Mm. Tell about the colors, Dennis. And how did you decide to make this picture? Eh. I make it green and purple. Uh-huh. And how did you decide the way to stroke the paint on the pit on the paper? I use a paintbrush. You use a paintbrush. Did you use a big one or a little one? A little one. A little one. A thin thin or thick? A thick. You use a thick one too. <laughs> and so who helped you to paint this picture? Robert. Did you come up with the idea by yourself? Yeah, I painted by myself. So I he don't... didn't help you at all? <laughs> no, I just did my own, so I can paint by myself. Oh, thank you for coming with us today and sharing that with us. I'm going to talk with Daddy D for a little while. That's what you call him, right? And see what if he wants to talk about some of his pictures. Thanks. Thank you for joining us. So, um, Derek. You said that you get your inspiration from musical artists. Any artists in particular that you like to paint? There's, there's, there's one particular artist that I, I really have done more images of um, uh -huh. than any other, and that's Prince. And Prince. main reason is because um, not only am I inspired by his music, but a lot of the women like him. <laughs> so <laughs> I feed off of the comments that I receive from the women, you know, uh -huh. and they all love Prince. So uh -huh. I think I have maybe uh, three to four images of Prince that it's the biggest one. Next in line would be Mary J. Blige. Uh -huh. I'm just a big Mary J. fan, so I, I love Mary J. And any, any any image that I can capture of her, be it hairstyle, be it eyeglasses, be it just the image itself, I love to do that. And then, you know, there's um, Erica Badu and Maxwell. So like uh -huh. I say, it's mostly the artists that I can stick in, you know, you stick a CD in once, that's one thing, but when oh. you stick it in over and over and over again, uh -huh. you know you're inspired and love what they're saying one way or the other, and, and for me to hear that while I'm painting, uh -huh. the time just flies by. Let's take a look at one of your pictures. I know you brought a picture with you to share with us, yes. and this uh, is of Michael Jackson. Yes. Let's take a look at that and talk about this picture. Now, when we look at this picture that you have of Michael Jackson, it shows multiple faces. That's one of the um, that's one of the main aspects that people can tell my work from other artists and so uh -huh. forth. They can look at um, when they look at an image and they see the uh, three uh, images of a, of a person, then they pretty much know that that's you know my style and uh -huh. everything. Um, I do that with all the different artists, and what I try to capture when I do that is the different turning points in their lives. Uh -huh. um, of course, Michael Jackson go back so far. 
Yes. God, you can just capture all kind of images from him. So, yes, he I did mean, have different looks right, too. Right, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So what I tried to do was starting with him as a young entertainer uh -huh. and then capture him once again as he was a middle-aged entertainer. Uh -huh. And then the last part is, you know, when he became of his uh -huh. elder age and uh -huh. so forth, you know. So you try to, you know, what I tried to do is capture the image that can tell a story in the look. Uh -huh. um, I love to capture the uh, um details in the face, you know, uh -huh. the lips, the eyes, especially the eyes. I try uh -huh. to make the eyes more realistic than anything because a lot of times, you know, they say the eyes is the image to a person's soul or uh -huh. something like that. Window so, to the soul. Window to the soul, exactly. Mm -hmm. So what I try to do is capture that detail, especially in the eyes, and then the lips is just a matter of, you know, you can almost hear the words come out, uh -huh. you know, if you can capture the details as far as the lips and things go. So that's what I focus on mainly is right uh -huh. there in the face and try to do the triplicate of three images of the face. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, Derek, we're going to take a short commercial break. Okay. And when we come back, we're going to look at some of your other pictures that you have, that you brought with us. Okay. Thank you. Oh, those boys are much too much. Those boys are much too much. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to... Welcome back. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson, and I have Derek Brown with me, and I hope you all enjoyed that little short commercial break that we had. While we took that break, we brought out another one of Derek's pieces. Derek, let's talk about this piece that we have here. Maxwell, the man Maxwell. of the man. Maxwell. Yes. <laughs> uh, had a lot of people that came up, you know, were very interested in um, seeing something of his image. And what I try to also do is try to... Um, I guess bring a contemporary style to the art and so hmm. forth. So I try to focus on, um, you know, images that are current, music that's up to date. Uh -huh. And um, Maxwell was just one of those guys that, you know, when he sings, you know, he can pretty much put his soul into it and uh -huh. you can hear it. And I just wanted to try to do something that make you see it. So you can hmm. listen to him and look at him. <laughs> and so whenever you just decide to paint a person or a picture I should say mm -hmm. how long does it normally take you from start to finish I'm getting much faster in the beginning when I first did my first one back in 04 um, a picture of that nature would have taken me anywhere from three to four months to complete. oh really exactly because during the time that I first started I was doing it as more so a relaxation thing so uh -huh. you, know, you never want to get caught up into any long-term um, images. I've had more people come tell me, look, you need to learn how to put the brush down. Sometimes <laughs> you just got to learn how to stop doing your work because it's, it's enough. Uh -huh. um, but um, right now, I can do the same, um, like this Maxwell one, I can do it in about a month or so now. You know, so I'm much faster, but by the same token, I can do one and not want to be bothered with uh -huh. the art again for another two months or so. So it all depends on what's going on uh -huh. in my life and <laughs> mm. how I'm feeling and, uh -huh. you know, more than anything else, I love the art for the passion of it. Uh -huh. um, I, I don't want to be driven to, you know, whereas it's a money-making thing. I want to, you know, of course you want to make money from it and, and to, you know, get some new supplies and things of this nature, uh -huh. but I don't want that to be the driving force behind right. me. I just love the passion of the art mm -hmm. um, for the relaxation and, and, and the other um, positive aspects uh -huh. that I can receive from it. Let's see if we have another picture that we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. So, Derek, this picture that we have here, let's talk about it some. Prince. Prince. Prince is the man. Yes, <laughs> Prince is the man. Uh, once again, this is an 18 by 24 um, acrylic watercolor picture that I uh -huh. performed. Uh, one of the things that I did in this earlier Prince is um, to, to, I love to create motion in my images. Uh -huh. And what the, how I create motion in that particular one is I try to add a cloud effect to the um, oh. background. Um, so I got a combination of, you know, uh, one image of his face, another image of his um, partial body, mm -hmm. and then I combine those two, and then, and then or in order to take out the um, white background, uh -huh. I blend in the clouds and the blue in the back. So that's another aspect that, 
you, you can tell my work uh -huh. from other people, you know, just the blending of all the images and the, um, the, the lack of use of the white background uh -huh. and the white space and so forth. And this looks like something that Prince would want in his house too. Well, you know, actually. When I look at that picture. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, I was very fortunate to work with a young man almost uh, five or six years ago and he actually commissioned me to do a piece for Prince. <gasps> So yes, I have Prince in my collection. What? No, he's a collector. Yes, he has a what? piece of work. Yes, he does. He has a collector. Also, when um, when I did a piece for the um, local club called Tempos, uh -huh. um, they had a performance performed by um, Erica Badu, uh -huh. and she's a collector of one of my pieces. What? Right. And also when they had Charlie Wilson there, Charlie Wilson has one. So I'm oh. very fortunate to have some real good prominent <laughs> collectors right now. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> yes, it is. I appreciate it. Well, I let's really take do. another look at one of your other okay, pictures thank you. Thank that you, you brought with you. Okay. Let's take another look at one of your other pictures that you brought with you. I see that we have a picture of Marvin Gaye. So what inspired you to pay paint a picture of Marvin Gaye. Wow, Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye was one of the first, I would put it like this, Marvin Gaye is my old school. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I had a friend that was in love with Marvin Gaye uh -huh. and for her birthday I was like, hey, let me just try to put this together and see what it comes out to huh. be. So this was one of the actual second, third ones that I did and what, what was so surprising about it, which really inspired me to pursue the arts even more. This was the first one that I put into the city ASC contest. And I won. <laughs> you won awards yes, too? Yes, I've won awards. I've won the ASC um, Art Award at the City of Charlotte. Um, I believe this one won, won the People's Choice Award. Wow. And um, I believe it also won the um, First Place um, Adult Professional Award. I believe, uh -huh. I believe uh -huh. it was that category. So I won two awards for this particular picture. But this was the lead into the other works that inspired me to pursue huh. more and do other things. So like I said, when it comes to like the Marvin Gaye, you know, he's my old school, but <laughs> A lot of people be like, old school, you know. <laughs> so that's well, we what all I'm still listen him. to him. Yes, yes, great man, great man. <laughs> great. So you mentioned that you won some awards from the city of Charlotte. Have you won any other awards? Uh, the ASC has been the biggest award. I've, I've gotten a lot of compliments. Um, I get a lot of critiques. And that's one of the things I would say as an artist that um, anybody that's inspiring to do artwork of any nature, um, be willing to take critiques. Uh -huh. um, it's going to help you become better. It's going to help you become aware of what other people are looking for and stuff. So be be willing to be you know criticized and don't take all criticism as bad. You know, right. it's a matter of learning from right. it more than anything else. Yeah, it's a hard thing to get used to <laughs> because just you know, like I said, one thing that I found out more than anything else is by visiting other galleries and uh -huh. other artists. Uh -huh. um, you 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 realize that you really have to be humble with your artwork. Uh -huh. You know, you don't put yourself on no pedestal and think you're better. There's some great artists out here. Really, there are, there are really some great great artists out here. So, I, and I think it's very humbling for me because uh -huh. it allows me not only to. Um, um, focus on new directions I want to go in with my uh -huh. art, but to also, you know, present it, you know, how you present it, the final images of it and everything so that you can become better and more still and then you can also talk about it. Right. Because, you know, one thing, it's one thing for people to see your art, but then it's another thing to talk about and see, and that's the aspect that I'm uh -huh. learning now, how to talk about the art uh -huh. and so forth. I can draw all day long, but when it comes to talk, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> yes, so, it is a little different. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, you know, trying to learn the business of art, trying uh -huh. to learn the terminologies that can be used as far as art go, it's, it's, it's a really deep field. It uh -huh. really is. And, and one of the things that I try to do, like with my grandson and other young people, I try to instill in them at an early age right. that art can be a very profitable, a very, mm -hmm. you, know, um, business as, you know, business aspect uh -huh. that you can go into, but you have to learn the procedures uh -huh. of it. Uh -huh. And it's something that um, you just have to take time. Uh -huh. You mentioned that you meet uh, or you go and visit art galleries and you talk to them. Are you a member of any art groups yes, here I in am. Charlotte? I recently joined the Charlotte Art League on uh -huh. Camden Road. Uh -huh. And um, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, I, I, I've only been a member of them for about two weeks now, but just based on some of the information what, uh, that I've seen, received, and seen and some of the um, programs that they sponsor, I'm hoping to become more involved and, and you know, be able to reach out more uh -huh. as far as um, 
um, that organization goes. Now, um, they have wall space in their gallery. They mm. also have artist studios and so forth. And right now, there's a waiting list. And, you know, once again, you have to go through the process of submitting the correct um, paperwork as far uh -huh. as, you know, artist resume, artist bio, um, once again, the um, portfolio, uh -huh. so that they can look at and judge so it's just not a matter of saying I'm an oh. artist stick me up in here you know you okay. have to you have to do what's necessary to qualify and once again it's just a matter of if you're interested in, do, in uh -huh. going in that direction uh -huh. you're going to do what it takes to get there uh -huh. so it's, it's a step so hopefully um, I'm hoping in by the early part of next year that I'll be in a position to actually have taken the steps necessary to have a either a display wall uh -huh. or a studio uh -huh. in the Charlotte Art League and, and then go wow. from there yes. So Derek, let's talk about this picture that we have now. Okay. Great. So this is a picture of that is a neo soul singer, and now a lot of people look at her and they give her all kind of names, you know, because she looks like this artist that they've seen oh. and look like that. Basically, um, this was a, a an abstract realism piece that I did and uh -huh. so forth. Uh, one of the things that I try to do to make my work stand out from other artists is I try to throw some type of uh, emotion into the uh -huh. artwork, something that will show movement, that uh -huh. will show rhythm, uh -huh. and then uh, and, uh, along with the um, actual image itself, you know, capturing the eyes, the ears, uh -huh. and the nose and all. Um, and this particular piece is not, a, is, to me, it's not a particular artist at all. It's just a young lady that sings. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Just a young lady that sings or speak po um, spoken word. Uh -huh. So, I mean, it's like, you know, you can pretty much make up what the image is doing as you you put the, your own story yeah, to it. Exactly, ah, exactly. Okay. So what I, you know, what I was trying to do more than anything else, once again, was take realism and then combine it with abstract, uh -huh. and you know, put the two together and see how it would come out. Once again, this was one of the pieces. Whereas when I look at it, I wasn't satisfied with it. I wasn't, you know, happy with it. Uh -huh. But I've had other people look at it and say, "What more do you need to do to it?" You yeah, know, it's so, perfect. Like, right, exactly. So, right. You know, that's when I decide. Okay, let's go ahead and let it go. Um, some pieces, one of the things that I try to do more than anything else is, um, along with doing the original artwork, you try to make the art affordable to the general public. Uh -huh. Because, you know, a piece like that right there can, you know, the original can go anywhere from three to four hundred dollars just uh -huh. for that particular size. And I know that, you know, the way the economy is and, and, and people pockets are right now, that everybody can't come out that. Right. So you try to, you know, reproduce it, you know, in a lithograph form so that it can be more affordable mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, towards people so that if they're going to put, um, you know, they can spend 25 or $30 mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the piece and everything, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. those are things that I try to do as far as my work go to make it real comfortable uh -huh. so that people can, I want people to be collectors. Right. Not of just my work, but of any work, of right. any young artist, you uh -huh. know, get into the collecting field. Uh -huh. I mean, you would be surprised how much it would Inno inno innovate you, or what, what's the word? I can't think of it. You know, give you energy, uh -huh. give you, uh, give you, give you a sense of good feeling just to look at it uh -huh. and so forth. And you collect what you like. You uh -huh. know, if you see a piece that you like, buy. I present to you Algebra Two. Who will step up to his challenge? Me. Take on the tough classes now. You need them to prepare for college. So tell me, you had mentioned earlier that people criticize your work. How do you handle criticism? It was hard in the beginning. It was uh -huh. real hard in the beginning, you know, because um, you're sitting there and you're excited about what you've done. And once again, you know, if you're already having doubts about your work because you've seen <laughs> other artists, you know. Right. The last thing you want to hear is a piece of criticism. You know? <laughs> um, but, I mean, it's, it's one of those kind of things you learn how to grow from it and uh -huh. so forth. I mean, at one point, I had one person who criticized the work. Um, I mean, she wasn't criticizing. It was just like, all your people are dead. Why do you do so many images yeah, of dead Yeah, I was wondering people? about right. that because I've seen your work. You 
do kind of focus on them. Right, right. Which it's, is not a bad thing. Exactly, exactly. And and once again, it was more so a matter of what other people wanted uh -huh. at that time, you uh -huh. know. So now I try to, you know, not really focus on those that have passed, but, you know, those that are living uh -huh. and so forth. Uh -huh. So that's what I try to get into now more of the living. But the criticism is, is, is something that it comes with the territory. Right. It comes with the territory. And it either it, you're going to either, you know, learn from it, like I said, uh -huh. or you're going to let it tear you apart. Uh -huh. So the biggest thing is just go ahead and learn from it. You know, go ahead and um, take what you can from it and move forward. Um, the, the, the thing about art is it's you. Right. It's you. And I mean, you know, people are going to like it and people are not going to like this it. This is true. So <laughs> when That's you get to true. the point, you, when you get to the point, whereas you, you're trying to do something for the passion of it, I would never say I don't care what nobody thinks, uh -huh. but by the same token, I just do what I feel. And, and that's how you become creative also. Uh -huh. You just put down what you feel and you just kind of feed off of it. Uh -huh. You'd be surprised the number of people that like something you don't like. Because uh -huh. I've had work to sell that I would have thrown in the trash. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I've, I, I, a lot of you not. I've had work that I just I would just throw it under the sh shelf and put it away. And for some reason, I pulled it out, matted it up, framed it. And I had people say, hey, I like that. I want that. I want that. And I was like, wow. Whoa. Yeah, that's why a, that's would you why. want that? Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And the worst part about that is because the piece is so unique, it's uh -huh. hard to go back and do it over. Right. And it's gone. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so it, it kind of just takes you in a new direction and try different things and, you know, keep your creative juices flowing. <laughs> I know that you've done a lot of work on artists, and I've seen your work. You've had Tupac, Gerald Levert. Prince, Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. help me. Um, Charlie Wilson, <laughs> Charlie Wilson, Aretha Franklin, James Brown. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> but, Erica Badu. Ah, <laughs> but you've done some other work too in a realism um, area of art, and we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about that. Okay. The mailbox and the traffic light. Both are ideas from the minds of African Americans. Support the United Negro College Fund because a mind is a terrible thing. Thank you for coming back and joining us here at Better You. I'm with my guest, Derek Brown. We were talking about some of the work that he has done, and he does a lot of work with artists, but he also paints, pictures that show movement. The couple of times I've seen Derek's art, it looks like the picture was moving. There was one piece that he did, and I rave about it all the time, and it looks like the lines were actually going like this in the picture. Now, Derek, you did bring us one yes. of your pictures. Yes. I wish we had that print that I saw that I liked, but I know you sold it. Okay. So we're going to talk about the print that you brought with you to share with us. This is, do you have a name for this one? Coming up with names is so crazy because, you know, it's, it's like, I can name them all inspiring because uh -huh. it's just like you come up with the first thing that's off the top of your head. Uh -huh. um, th this is um, mostly abstract. I call it abstract in my version because- Oh, your version. Yes, this is a new territory for me. So this is something I haven't done before. Uh -huh. And once again, there was a gentleman that I was working with who suggested that, you know, maybe you should get away from the images uh -huh. and start working on some abstracts. You and, should. And I was just like, okay, you know, now what can I do? What can I do? And all of a sudden I just start doing the swirls. And by the time you add the colors in, if you ask me what format I use as far uh -huh. as coming up with the piece, I couldn't even begin to tell you. I really couldn't at all. I just, I just get in it with a brush and I just let it go. And I just have fun with the colors and let them mix and everything. Uh -huh. And then I just end up with what you see there. Um, so the abstract is, is, is new territories. I'm always trying new things uh -huh. with brushes, with colors, with the water, uh -huh. um, and, and seeing how it's all going to mix. Uh -huh. some, of my, some of my greatest work or my best work have been from mistakes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 have honestly been from mistakes. I mean, if, if you would ask me what's the technique, and because uh -huh. I've had people come up um, and say, well, can you teach classes? I said, well, I can teach a class, but it's going to be hard to teach you this technique uh -huh. because there really is no technique. Uh -huh. You just get up in there, and what, what you learn from when you, when you apply it the first time, you just try to do it again. Uh -huh. Not always the same thing, but you just go for it and stuff. 
<laughs> I think you need to keep doing this because you have some excellent work out oh, thank there. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. And if you want to know more information about Derek Brown, where he's going to be showcasing his work, you can go to my website, www.abettyyoushow.com. And Derek, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Cynthia. Glad I to be here. I wish we had more time to show more of your work because I know yeah. you bought a whole bunch right. of pictures <laughs> that you. everybody didn't get to see. But if you want to see more of his work, you can go to my website. And thank you for joining us and join us next week every Wednesday at 6 p.m. for a better you. I'm a mommy. I love kids. I'm responsible, loving, nurturing. Ow. Just don't break anything! Ah! Play nice! No, 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 don't touch that! Ah! Aren't you going to do something? I could use a little compassion. Stop, stop, stop! <laughs> Being a parent's a lot of work. You don't have to be perfect. Where's mommy? <laughs> to be a perfect parent. Here I am! Ha ha, it's not a ghost. I'm not a ghost.